Hello and welcome to Crux Investor. We caught up with Peter Doherty today. He's the CEO of Argonaut Gold. And we asked him the question, why should investors be interested in a 900 million market cap company? Surely there's no growth potential there. Well, Peter talks through their current production profile, the development profile that's coming through, which will contribute significantly towards the bottom line. And of course, their exploration program. This is a fundamental story, says Peter. And if you want our thoughts and opinions, on that, the plan ahead, and indeed the company and Peter, you can join us at cruxinvestor.com forward slash club, where you can also find detailed company reports and analysis. We've got commentary from experts from around the world on a variety of companies and commodities. Plus, we've got summaries of all the interviews that we do, save you some time, because we know you're busy people, plus training courses. Uh, but most importantly, and excitingly, there's a wonderful, thriving community of investors sharing their thoughts and ideas with each other in a nice, friendly and safe environment, free from all that judgment trolling and abuse you see elsewhere on those nasty chat rooms. Uh, if you like the idea of that, you can join them at cruxinvestor.com forward slash club. And we'd love your feedback too. So give us a like, leave your thoughts below. And if you want to see precisely what we talked about today, do take a look at the timestamps below. Peter, how are you, sir? Great. How about yourself this morning, Matt? Doing just fine. They've opened up the pubs, bars and restaurants where you can finally eat indoors. There you go. <laughs> so I'm excited. Uh, so what about you? Where are you? I am located in Reno, Nevada. That's our uh, head office for the company. Nice, nice. You trotting down to Mexico anytime soon? I'm actually going to be leaving here this afternoon to head back to Mexico. Uh, we've been fortunate out here. We've been able to uh, travel all but about two months last year, be able to head back and forth to the operations. So oh, fantastic. Things are a little more open. Yeah, seem, seem to be, seem to be. And what about down in Mexico? Things open there? Uh, things are are actually quite open in uh they they use a traffic light signal for for most of the country and uh our three operations that we're running down there all of them are in uh green today so green zone so that's that's uh that's quite nice to be in that uh, situation like sorry, like green today as in it go, how often do they change the traffic lights i mean what they do it uh they look at it on a weekly basis and oh, they, wow. they will change it uh at one time we did get into a stage where we got to orange which, uh, you know, is somewhat concerning, right? But most of the time, at least where the operations have been, we've either been green or yellow uh, during the whole pandemic. Uh, in some of the bigger cities, uh, you could get to the Mexico City hit red, but uh, in Hermosillo and in Durango City, uh, those capital cities um, never really got out of the orange kind of category ever during the whole pandemic, so. Okay, so green, yellow, orange, red. So you got it. Okay, I didn't know that. There you go. That's good. Hey, well, look, um, that's good news. Thanks for that. But can you give us, um, just if you don't mind, for people new to this story, and I know you're of a certain size now, so lots of people you know, should have heard of you, but for those who haven't, give me a one minute overview um, and I'll pick it up from there. Okay, great. Argonaut Gold for your investors is a North American producer. We have three operations in Mexico and one here in Nevada in Florida Canyon. We'll produce about 200 to 250,000 ounces of gold this year. And we have several development uh, projects and we're excited to be involved in uh, exploration and also development at the same time for the company. And it's uh, it's an exciting time for us. So there's who we are, sort of. I like it, short and sweet, good. Um, 200 to 250,000, that's the kind of mid-tier territory that a lot of companies would like to reach here, 900 million market cap as well. Um, and I always think the, the difficulty with companies like yours, when you reach a certain size, so that billion dollar mark, is to kind of keep that growth component to the story. Because it's been it's been flat for the last four or five years. I mean, there's been a few moments, obviously COVID hitting last March, but it's been relatively flat. So where's the sex and the sizzle for people looking at this story afresh? Yeah, I think when you look at us, because we've been in the business uh, with Argonaut here for the last uh, 11 years, we've developed a nice pipeline. So we have all phases of the business from discovery. We have some exciting exploration I'd like to talk to you about today at a couple of our mines that are going on to then development as we're kicking off and transforming this company from a, a relatively short mine life, higher cost operation to a lower cost, longer life mine operation in the future here. So that's kind of what's happening in the company today. But uh, quite exciting because every day you're waking up something's new. Whether you're in an operation and, and what you saw yesterday has changed to whether you're in the expiration phase of seeing new drill holes and new discoveries, new 
uh, potential for projects and new places to enter into or development where clearly as you're building your house and seeing it uh, arise right before you, it, it is quite exciting. So we do that with a backdrop of production of about uh, this 200 to 250,000 ounces, which should yield about $100 million this year. But that, that's, but that's the security blanket, Peter. I mean, one, it's a nice number, and I'm sure at today's prices, it's, it's very nice cash flow for you too. But, but can you give me the kind of Q1 numbers? What are the kind of highlights that we should be looking at? So when we look at uh, the Q1, we had record production, right around 60,000 ounces. We had record cash flow come out, another uh, $28 million from the operations. And we had some exciting, and I mean exciting drill results, some of the best drill results in this business in the last three, four years come out at one of our projects. So I think that the, when you think of highlights, those are them. But underpinning this uh, and building a company, we are built to last. What do you mean by that? And, and I, I, when I talk about being built to last, I mean not just about for here and now, we have this pipeline of exploration through development projects that will really transform us into the next decade of what we're going to run. It's already in-house. We don't need to go out and acquire that. We don't have to hope for success through the drill bit. It is there, it is scheduled, and it is moving forward today. So, so tell, me, tell me about this, Peter, because like, I'm looking at the market and I see companies of a certain size, 500 million plus, at various stages. They can be single assets, single, single jurisdiction, it seems, and people don't seem to uh, mind. You've got multiple projects at different stages, which is great. But can we just focus on the cash flowing bit, if you don't mind? So 60,000 ounces in, in Q1 is great. Uh, the cash flow that you the cash flow is great, and the cash in the bank is good. So on a fundamental basis, you feel so comfortable with where, where you're at, this 900 million valuation. People see that 200, 250,000 ounce and go, actually, no, this company is real. You, you're comfortable with that. I think when we look at valuations of how companies are valued, we think there's a tremendous disconnect still that, that we're looking to unlock. And let, let me talk to you a little bit about that in your investment. When we look at how gold companies are valued, and I've been in this industry over 35 years, and I've seen the highs and lows. I sold gold back in 1981. So that tells you how long I've been around. It's been a long time. But what I what I find in this business is this, that if you build a business that can survive over the long run, it may take a little bit longer, but you're gonna take a lot of the risk out of the program. You look at the company today, there's, there's nearly $230 million of cash in the bank. You have a convertible, at a very respectable rate of 4.6%. You have an untapped revolving credit facility for $125 million at two and a quarter plus library. I mean, you don't acquire those if you aren't running a solid foundation. We have that foundation. Just uh, when you think about a building, you don't look to the 40th floor, you look to how did you build the foundation and what's gonna happen when when things happen. There will be times when the wind blows hard. You don't have that solid foundation and the wind blows hard or a struggle comes in the market. How do you survive and move forward? We have that foundation in the four operating assets. As I said, Q1, nearly $30 million worth of cash generated out of those assets. Now that is a foundation that helps build out the rest of the program. What's the size of the total resource on those four producing assets? When we look at those four producing assets, some of them are very short lives, right? As I said before, earlier, we're looking at one project that's got a year and a half left in it, okay? If we look longer term, we're looking at uh, one of those four projects that has about 10 years already identified. So when I think about the existing operations and existing portfolio, we think about them as short mine lives, relatively high cost. Where we're moving towards are much longer life, my lives, which much lower operating costs. So what I'd like to share with you and, and your readers is to talk about how we're going through this transformation. 
when we step back and we look at where we're at today, we are a North American producer. We have substantial resources and reserves to work from. We have nearly 8 million ounces, seven, seven to 8 million ounces in what we call proven and probable category. And then we have sitting with <clears throat> roughly 13 million ounces in our resource and reserve base. So that's a solid foundation to work from. And we are producing, as I said, about 250,000 ounces a year. If we look at the scorecard over the last year, it was fantastic. We have this philosophy of trying to transform the company from a relatively high cost, short mine life to a longer mine life, lower cost, and do that inherently out of the portfolio base that we have. So when we think about it, underpinning that strategy is a three-phase approach of harvest, replace, and grow. Last year, the scorecard looked like this. From the harvest phase out of the operating assets, $100 million generated. From the replacement phase, we picked up a new acquisition in Florida Canyon, the mine here in Nevada. And we also had tremendous resource and reserve growth. Our reserves grew by 43% and our resources grew by 26%. That's off the charts. And now on the growth phase, we not only finalized permitting, finalized our First Nations or our social licensing for this project called Magino up in Canada, but we also hit the green light to put it into production. And now we're into the phase of construction on that project. So all three cylinders of this program hit with significant results over the last year. And that's what you're looking for when you're looking at a company that's in a mode of really transforming from where they've been to where they're going in the future. And we've laid the pathway and we hit with success on all factors. And that's what gets people excited about this company. It does. It gets going. people excited, Peter. But you know, some of the numbers you mentioned there are, are significant. You know, um, in, in terms of how you've been able to move things along. But the market hasn't reacted. You could argue you're back to where you were in 2018, 2019, 2020 came off a bit, right? So I think you know the fact that you're back up around 2018 is is good news. But it seems like a kind of muted reaction compared to some of the numbers that you're talking about. So what, what are people not getting yet? Well, I think year over year, we were one of the higher performers in the industry, right? And clearly because of the, the results and the news that came out. I think the bigger challenge has been, where is the gold market headed? And, and where are the investors headed? I think one of the bigger challenges that we find as we start to look at the gold market over the last 20, 30 years is where are the new investors going to come from? And where are those fundings going to come from? Because right now, there has been a limited amount of new investors coming in. And there's a shrinking pool of capital. And when we think about that, you would, you would, as you rationalize this through your head, you think, wow, this commodity is going to go crazy if that's the case. Because this is all about supply and demand. And I think the, the issue that we face with the, with the gold market right now, there are so many different ways to step into an investment into the gold sector and get exposure, whether that's through an ETF or whether that's through a, a funding vehicle through actual physical gold. But today, that actual equity investor, it's hard. It's hard if you want to be an equity investor because with the research dropping off through the big firms, you're kind of going in blind. Where do you invest? How do you invest? Who do you trust? And that's why places like yourself really provide those insights for those investors to find out what is the track record of this management team? What has been their, their ability to, to lead and guide their company through difficult times? And let's face it, the gold sector has been under pressure over the last five years. And we're just starting to climb out today to see the generalists starting to come back to this sector. So I think the key is getting that exposure, getting firms like yourself to really open up the eyes and the windows and the ears to those private investors as to where to put your funds, who can you trust, 
and what's going to happen. Well, I, I would agree agree with a lot of that, absolutely. Be, but here's the thing: what, what sort of investors are you trying to get on board? Because again, gold bugs are gold bugs, and there's you know you you, you can't tell them gold goes in cycles because it's always uh, you know. It's always going to go to the moon and stay there. Um, it, it, it's a northward trajectory only. Th- those guys are fine, but you know you may not want to be. You may, may not be chasing them. But there's a lot of generalists coming into the space, so you don't know what they should be looking at, and they're going to be. Uh, some want to be told where to look, and some of them want to be. You know, point. At, you know, they, they want you to point at the object of of their desire and say it's okay to invest in that. And then there, there's a vast majority, who, quite frankly, should. Be looking at ETFs and, and and that sort of thing as a means of investing in gold. But do you have a, a sense of who you're after? Because you're talking to me so far the language of a fundamentalist. This is a you said it's a longer, more thoughtful process that you're going through and you're setting things up the right way. Does it? Do you sort of look out the window sometimes at some of the other stories out there and go, what on earth is going on there? Because we're getting. 500 billion, 1.3 billion type valuations on companies which haven't done anything yet. They're not producing cash. Does, does that distract you? Does it irritate you? I think, I think you know, there's, we can always look at the at the prettiest girl in the room and wish we were dating her, right? I mean, there's, there's always well, that. Not, uh, not unless she's wearing a to. wig and false eyelashes and false teeth, no. <laughs> Well, <laughs> what we don't know, we don't necessarily know, is that that there are different companies for different types of investors. And what I would submit to you is that the investor who wants to take that risk or in baseball terms wants to step up to the plate and just go for the guy who's going to hopefully hit the grand slam every time he gets to the plate, that's great. And there are companies that do cater to that. Our company is a bit different. We're trying to build for the long haul. That's who we've been. Uh, we created some, some relatively good companies in the past that I've been involved in, FMC Gold and then Meridian Gold, where we actually build on shareholder value. And we think the way you create the greatest value is from the ground up. And, uh, and you have to have a solid expiration program, a solid operating program to carry you because the winds of tide will change. We've been through it, as I said, over the last five, six years, where the funding hasn't been available for that that exploration type company who's been struggling to be able to really move the needle and, and advance their projects. And in this business, there is this cycle. And we, we start off with exploration. It's hard to get dollars and all this available to us. And then over time, we start to have a little uh, success. And that curve starts to rise on our valuation. We hit this reach where we're at a total frenzy at the top. And then guess what happens? We have to make a construction decision. And then guess what happens? Well, we may not have the permitting expertise, or we may not have the construction expertise. All of a sudden, we go through this this downward on the roller coaster, and it's a fast ride. We hit a bottom, and then we start to climb back out as we start to hit the production curve. Now, some guys climb right out, right away because they hit the ground running day one and no problems. Where some guys may start to climb up and then all of a sudden things didn't go quite as they expected and it just rolls right back off again. I've been fortunate in my career to be around six discoveries all the way from initial discovery all the way through production. I've also had to close down three sites, okay? So I understand the entire circle Okay. And I know what it takes to be successful along the pathway. And that's what I'm trying to teach our people. And what I'm trying to share with our investors that we understand what it takes to be successful. Yeah, there's going to be times when we're on this high and everything's going great. But there's also going to be times that the roller coaster is going to turn the other way. And you have to build to be able to overcome that. In a time when gold was down at $1,000 an ounce, we were still putting on, you know, a million dollars a quarter of free cash onto the balance sheet. It's not a lot, but we were putting it on. Today, this last quarter, nearly $30 million. So you have to build for every cycle. And when you do that, you have a sustainable company. 
And that's one that investors should want to be involved in because when you get that expiration success that we're going to talk a little bit about, it gets people excited and attracted well, to it. Well, let, let, let's, let's move on to it because I, I agree with you. I, we like a good, strong, fundamental story here, not the hype and hyperbole. So you've got the cash flowing now and you're building, you're going to be, what, you, you've got to build up a cash reserve because at some point those producing assets, they're, they're going to they're gonna fade, fade away, right? right? I, right. So we're into development on the next. Exactly. So let's go let's through a little that. bit about, let's talk about our, our, our first phase. We talked about the harvest phase, truly a success last year, first quarter, good, good start to this year. On the replacement phase, we talked about the reserve and resource growth, 43% in the reserves and 26% in the resource. So nearly 7 million ounces in proven and probable in the reserve and 13 million ounces in the resource. Now let's talk about the replacement phase because this is where people start to get excited. We just announced uh, last month um, some great drill results from one of our projects down in Mexico. It's called the La Colorado Project. And we're mining three different pits on that project. And so out of this one pit that we're actively mining in today, um, I draw your reader's attention to slide number 10 in their most recent corporate presentation. We hit some drill results that were fantastic the best that I've seen over the last five years. So in this, uh, on slide number 10, we're looking at two cross sections or two slices of bread out of the low of this pit. And what you can see here is on the left-hand side, these are about 25 meters apart. And the first one was 21 meters at 45 grams of gold and 275 grams of silver. And then on the second one on the right-hand side, you'll see that we hit an intercept of 12 meters of 100 grams of gold and 30 grams of silver. Now, those are fantastic. And here's what I, I can tell you about this project. This project is an operating project today. We'll produce somewhere around 60,000 ounces of gold out of this project. And all the mining is occurring here in this, in this pit where this drilling is occurring. And the exciting thing about this is we are mining what we call the halo around this, uh, this old mine. So this was a mine that was operated in Mexico in the late 1800s, early 1900s, was closed, started back up with a guy by the name of Chester Miller in the 90s with a company called El Dorado Gold. And this was his original launch asset for El Dorado Gold. And he mined just the halo around these old underground workings. Well, we continue to do that with a rising gold price. And we knew that these veins were deeper, but we didn't know anything about them. So we just started to drill deeper. And guess what? These guys were no fools in the old days. They actually followed the veins and were finding significant gold mineralization. there. Now we don't know what the future holds. We only have 11 holes in this, but we're continuing to drill it and see where this takes us. This could be a tremendous find and add more life at lower cost to this project. Those are great numbers, but 11 holes, how much money are you gonna be throwing at this thing? Well, the first round was just a little over $400,000. We'll probably put in close to seven hundred fifty, eight hundred on the next round. It's a bit challenging, Matt, because we're, we're operating here. Last year, this particular project put about $25 million under the piggy bank. This year, substantially more. Okay. So we need to keep that rolling because that's part of our development program and the cash funding for the company. But it's a bit of a dance because we're in here. And we're mining, and so every day we're going down deeper into this pit. We'll mine for the next two years here. So we'll do a bit of drilling, move the drill out, let them operate, then put the drill back in, back and forth. So a bit of a dance back and forth, but very exciting about what's happening there. And that's the kind of sizzle that an investor should look for because those are game changer holes. And if I could come out in the next six months from now, and give you an insight as to where the future might be going. This could really be a game changer. So not, is, not is, is, this, is this your number one development project? I mean, one, how many no. have you got? So let, let's, run, let's run through them all. Okay, so we have Magino up in Canada, which is a five million ounce deposit and growing. And we're having tremendous exploration results from that, okay? We also have a project uh, in, in Mexico called Cerro de Gallo that we're permitting right now. It has four and a half million gold equivalent ounces on it. 
We also have the Anaparl project in Mexico, which boasts about 2 million ounces on it. And then we have exploration projects going up. So exploration phase, this is very exciting what's happening. No, no, no we'll, we'll get to exploration. Let's not get too excited too early. Let's stick with development. We've dealt with production. Let's deal with um, development, okay? okay. So what we'll is development going to be bringing through, um, you know, in, in, in terms of when are each of these things going to be able to get into production? You know, what, how much more resources are going to be adding, uh, you know? so. Get us excited about that because that's the next phase of cash flow for you as your current producing assets fade away, right? So let's let's try and understand right. that. So let's go to the growth phase. So I draw your readers' attention if they if they follow the website and they look at that corporate presentation to slide number twelve, and we'll walk through a couple of slides in and around that. But we'll talk about this growth line. So when we think about mining companies and how they're valued today, for your investors. They need to understand that if you're a producing company of our size, you're getting about 0.7 times of all the future cash flows at a discount rate of 5%. That's typically how the valuations come out. And if you look at the eight analysts who covered this company, they'd say that's about $600 million. Okay. So then the analysts look at what's left in the pipeline. And they say, wow, your development pipeline is robust. It's not empty. And they'll give you about 0.2 to 0.3 times that development pipeline. Now, in two of these projects on the first phase, we're looking at a billion dollars to be unlocked in a $1,700 environment. So we'll talk about those two. They're on slide number 12. Those are the Magino project and the Cerro de Gallo project. Now, first off, the Magino project was the project that we green-lighted last year and we're in construction today. This project hosts five main ounces. It is right next to one of Canada's most prolific mines in the Island Gold Mine. Island Gold Mine belongs to Alamos Gold and is pound for pound the best mining project in all of Canada, in my opinion. It is one of the lowest cost producers and has one of the highest grades of all of the mines in Canada. We have started on the top end of this mine looking at an open pit mine, which hosts five million ounces. We'll develop it in two phases. The first phase will yield roughly two million ounces of that five million ounces. It'll take 17 years to process and we'll do so at a cost of about $700. Now you can contrast that with what we're running today, which is about an all in cost of around $1,100, $1,200, $1,300. So significant margins to come off this project. And as I said, we'll do it in phases. So if your readers can turn to the slide number 13, I want to give you a pathway into how Pete Doherty and his management team and their board of directors view. This is our big dream slide. We'll start with giving you a foundational setup for the project. Now, when we looked at this project, it hosts 5 million ounces in the open pit. We have permitted it for 35,000 tons per day, or a tails facility that will hold 165 million tons of material. So that's the big overriding umbrella. So we bought the whole city block. We're gonna start on one corner with a 10,000 ton a day operation. That is in construction today. It'll take roughly two years to do that. That 10,000 ton a day project will bring us 150,000 ounces a year at a $700 all-in cost over the first five years. That's transformational to us. But I submit to you, that's not all that's coming from this project. Because if we continue to follow the pathway on that remaining three main ounces in the open pit, this project really lends itself to that next step, growing to 20,000 ton per day. And with the recent underground drilling that we've had at this project, we think there's a potential to have not only an open pit, but an underground going at the same time. And if we do that, I would, I would submit to you, we can get to 19,000 ton a day from the open pit, 1,000 ton per day from the underground, and now have a 300,000 ounce a year producer over 20 plus years. That is not only meaningful to us, but anybody in this business because of its location and what this project can do. Well, well, let's, We're let's, just starting to scratch let's, the surface. Yeah, because. I mean that, that that's that's I mean, those are some nice numbers. I'm 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 interested for sure. So 
the the cost of getting this thing into production is is what are you going to have the money yourself yes yeah, so right now when we looked at greenlighting the project last year we said here's how we would fund it we were looking for the greatest shareholder friendly kind of program we said we had put so much of the balance sheet the cash that we had of the balance sheet into it as you know that's around 230 million dollars today we said we would do some kind of a debt friendly instrument we did that with the convertible for about $58 million. And then we said they needed somewhere in the neighborhood of $135 million worth of cash flow from the operations. We well, can see the first quarter was roughly around $30 million. So you can kind of understand the risk of how we're approaching this project. We expect on a Canadian dollar basis, those are all US dollar basis that I'm talking about, but from a Canadian dollar basis, somewhere around $510 million is what we'd look at on this particular project, 85 plus percent of the dollars will be Canadian dollar denominated on building here. So an exciting project, we're in construction, uh, kicked off construction in January. Right now, all the platforms for building the, the facilities have been done, all the logging, treeing, clearing, all that's been done. Um, and we're actually getting ready to start to, to pour cement here in se second quarter, along with erecting steel and starting the actual mining for the project. So well underway we will get everything buttoned up here in the fall by the end of the third quarter heading into the fourth quarter then we'll bolt together all the bits and pieces with what we call mechanical completion or dry commissioning to start in the third quarter late in the third quarter of 2022 fourth quarter of 2022 wet commissioning with first gold to come in the first quarter of 2023 now if we're fortunate enough we continue to drill we have success there and we do an expansion study to take us to 20,000 ton per day. If everything works out like we hope, we'll be in the position of not only pressing the green button and go in Q1 of 2023 for production, but also pressing the green button for go for that expansion to 20,000 ton a day. So that's really what's happening with that project. Yeah, it's starting small. It's been permitted big, but we're only going to build on that one corner of the whole entire block. But we have the capability to expand it. And so we, we really plan on taking that next step right when we begin 2023 and, and going through that process. So it's a two year process to get this project into production. Through four months, everything's been great, but uh, I liken it to bringing that baby home from, from the hospital. She's sleeping a lot right now. We haven't been through the terrible twos of the teenage years yet. So we'll see what happens over the next 20 months, but everything is going great right now. Right, so that, that that's gonna that's gonna um, sort of backfill on a lot of production over the over the next few years for you, crikey, big big numbers. Right. Any other sort of um, development projects, which or sort of near term development projects, or is it all exploration? Well, no, we have the Saratoga project that's in permitting right now. There's a feasibility study done on that. That that project hosts about four million ounces in Guanajuato, Mexico. It'd be an open pit heat leach, like everything else that we're running in Mexico. And it has a, a two-phase program. The first phase would be about half of that resource, take about 15 years. Again, we're kind of like the, the prove me. We'll get it started small, then we'll take the next step to make it a little bit bigger. It has about an 80,000 ounce a year profile, little less than $700 operating, all in operating costs, and a 15 year life as defined today. But we think that, again, you start at that size, you step up to the next. And then we have the Ana Paul project that is permitted today, sitting in Guerrero, Mexico as well. And that project, uh, we need to do some more work on, but it's uh, our number three development project. So we have three development projects that we can bring forth. We think that the first is Magino. It's got a two year build on it. We think the Sarada guy comes in maybe next year to the following year that we start on that project, moving it forward. And then behind that would be the Ana Paul project. Then to expiration, Fantastic results happening at La Colorada. Fantastic results happening at our, uh, what we call Florida Canyon. We're trying to expand that project in here in Nevada. And then at Magino, um, one, of the, one of the key highlights for us has been, has been, you can find with your readers on slide number 19. Now this project sits right directly next to the Alamos Gold Project. As I said, one of the most prolific mining projects in Canada. And we're talking right next, we're talking 100 meters away. So these are brother sister, and they are mining underground and having tremendous success. Our guys came to us 
roughly a year and a half ago and said, we'd like to start to drill deeper underneath the pit. And we said, sure, go ahead. Here's your allotted million or $2 million to do this. They had success in finding what we call the elbow and central zone. They came to us last summer and said, we had success last year. Give us some more money. They'd like to move west. We gave them money. They were unbelievably successful hitting the Scotland, Sandy, 42, and south zones. And we released that in the fall last year. And now this year, they came to us late in the fall last year and said, let us have some more money and move further west on the project. And we hit some of our best drill holes ever at this project. They are MA20057 and 424, where we hit significant grades, which your, your readers can find on slide number 20, which were like three meters of 47 grams and, and seven meters, seven and a half meters at 29 grams. And these are fairly shallow in the system. We're looking at anywhere between 300 and 450 meters depth, where our neighbor is seeing those very type of grades at about a kilometer and a half down. So we're really excited to see these higher grade hits coming much higher up in the system. Our goal this year is to try and drill this out, come up with a mineralized inventory so we can come up with that thousand ton per day. Is it feasible from the underground? And that really wraps that story really around Magino moving from that 10,000 ton a day to that 20,000 ton a day with that uh, underground coming in and really paints the picture. So if you think for your investors and your readers, what you're really looking for, what's going to happen this year? Pete, you've told me about a company that's got management that's been around, understands what it takes to be successful. You've got a solid foundation of the company. So what's going to be coming at me this year? Well, I think you're going to see exciting production news, good solid cash flows from that foundation that's been set up. Secondly, there are exciting development news happening every month. We have a, a development newsletter going out every month on the Magino project and about how we're advancing that. And it's exciting just if you've ever built a house, starting with that foundation to when the, you know, when the timbers come in and you start to see the the forming of and the framing of that house. That's what we're doing at Magino this year. Then step on to the expiration front. Great drill results in the first quarter. Expect more of it to come in the second quarter and the second half of the year. Okay, you've, you've explained to me how you think and how you approach projects. And it's I, I get that the slow, that the, you know, focus on the fundamentals and all, and, and all of that. But again, just looking at the window we talked about earlier, it seems that there's a certain way to kind of game the market in that you put off enough high grade uh, results and you can get the market excited. You've seen companies do this. We've been stepping out five, 10 meters from previous high grade drill results and the market goes nuts. Are you, are you, how are you going to play it? Um, we tend to to work a little slower than that. So that different, that distance between the 424 and the 057 hole, that's 278 meters. We, we like to look for something that's gonna stay in the game, not just a one hole wonder, okay? So we've got a pretty big distance between, so now we'll come back and infill in between that, right? But we don't hit the one hole and then go five meters away from it to hit the next hole because that doesn't really add any meaningful difference to the overall business plan. We need to have something that's going to be sustainable that actually can be built into a mine. We are operators first and foremost. Okay. And one whole wonders don't excite operators. We have to see big distances and big widths. And so that's what we're looking for. And that's what we're playing for. So you'll see additional drill holes that define greater length and continuity than you will one whole wonders out of this company. Peter, thank you very much for your time today. Very much enjoyed the conversation, hearing the story. We've not spoken before, so I'm deli delighted to meet you as well. Uh, you're jumping on an airplane soon, so I better let you go. Okay. All right. Hey, thank you again. And and if you want to follow up, uh, the information's out on the website. Anybody can reach out to Dan or myself uh, and be happy to spend more time with you. Okay? Thank you again. <laughs>